Good afternoon. You've been here for the last eight hours. I'm the last speaker, so I need to make a promise. My speech will be like a miniskirt. It will be short enough in order to be attractive and long enough in order to cover the essential parts. <laughs> My name is Michael Virardi, and I will share a story, a personal story, and this story will be under nine minutes. I'm what you call in Cyprus a good boy. I did, or I think I did, everything right. I was a reasonably good student, an athlete. I never misbehaved. I went to university to study. And like most Cypriots who have a family business back home, I came back to work for the family business. Our family business was centered around the strong personality of my father. And throughout my teenage years, I was told and groomed that this was my future and that I should be very lucky to have such a future. After completing my studies and coming back home, I brought ideas with me and some of these ideas helped our business perform better and I was being recognized as one of the contributing factors towards that growth. As time passed, the business grew and people's perception about me and my skills grew as well. But I knew that this was false because my life up until that time was centered around the hollowness of numbers. Sales were up, profits were up, I knew a lot more people, everything was great. But I, I felt hollow. I realized that up until that time, I was being a good boy, trying to tick all the boxes. I tried to make my father proud. I tried to make our, my family happy, our long-term employees satisfied, and I tried to remain within the constraints of what society calls a good boy. I soon realized that I was doing everything for everyone else except for myself. I was not being perceived for who I was. I was being perceived by what others thought I was or should be. And for the first time in my life, I felt afraid because I spent 10 years of my life trying to satisfy everyone else except for myself and I didn't even know who I was. So I felt alone. And I had a choice continue doing what I relatively did well and keep ticking all the boxes, or take a step, rethink, and discover who I really was. I could look myself in the mirror, or, or rather, I could listen to everybody else who was saying what I really was. So the question that kept coming back into my mind at that time was, how do you become a motivational speaker in a country that knows little about motivational speaking and where everybody likes to talk rather than to listen? <laughs> How do you start? And like all things in life, you start by realizing that you need to be prepared. And you prepare by realizing that you know nothing and that nothing can be taken for granted. And once you know that you don't know, then you begin by learning. So I had to regenerate myself. I had to use God's analogies the way he has given them to me. I had to use my two ears and one mouth, listen twice and talk once when I attended seminars and events that focused on the area of specialization that I wanted to focus in. I held close to my heart, and I still hold close to my heart, what the late motivational speaker, Charlie Tremendous Jones said, when he said, you are the same person today that you will be in five years' time from today, except for two things, the books you read and the people you meet. So I started meeting new interesting people, learning from mentors and from friends, and I started immersing myself into books 
I started absorbing ideas. Because as a friend of mine said, if I have one euro and you have one euro and we exchange it, we both end up having one euro. But if I have one idea and you have one idea and we exchange it, we both end up having two ideas each. So the more I learned, the more I realized I wanted to learn. And I always had in mind Malcolm Gladwell's rule, the 10,000 hour rule from his book Outliers, when he said that the best doctors in the world, the best lawyers in the world, even the best criminals in the world, they need 10,000 hours to become an expert in their chosen field. Even the Beatles, before they became known, they used to play six days a week, seven hours every day, for seven years in the former West Germany. They used to play music and they were unknown until they hit their critical mass. So I had to rethink my approach because if I haven't done so, I would have never forgiven myself for not knowing what I could have become. So I reacted. And today, my friends, the last thing I want to share is that my name is Michael Virati. I'm 40 years old. I'm happily married. My son Rolando is two months old. I'm working from home, and I'm living my dream. Thank you very much. <laughs>